Hello, my dear students. I am Dr. Avijit Majumdar, working as director and professor of Noida Institute of Engineering and Technology Pharmacy Institute. Uh, we will be studying about this area of pharmaceutical biotechnology, which is called enzyme biotechnology. Now, in the previous classes, we have discussed about the various applications of biotechnology, how the industries are doing, how our country is doing, and in order to fulfill the mission of Atmanirbhar Bharat, the segment of biotechnology industry has really done a very commendable role. They have produced various vaccines, which has protected the life of millions of people across the globe. Then we have, uh, in the last class, we have discussed about, in a nutshell, what enzyme biotechnology is. Just in continuation with that, we will be discussing today, what basically the term enzyme biotechnology means. What is the meaning of the term enzyme biotechnology? And as we know that the production of enzymes with the help of various biotechnological tools is what enzyme biotechnology deals with. Now, in the today's class, we will be discussing about how to produce, how to stabilize an enzyme. The methods of enzyme immobilization, partly I will be discussing in my class today and that will be followed in the consequent next class in the next day. Then we will be discussing about what are the various application of enzyme biotechnology in the recent days and what are the major advancement which has taken place in the recent period. So, first of all let us start with the production of enzymes. Now, as we know that microorganisms in fact they have played a very wonderful role apart from their pathogenic nature they have a very good beneficial role also. And uh, one of such role is production of various beneficial compound for our use. Microorganism really had helped the human mankind by giving us a wide range of compound, whether it is beginning from your antibiotics, whether it is your vitamins, whether it is your enzymes, whether various crops, various foods, various you know uh, vegetables, they have in fact, they have given a very commendable role. So, whenever we are starting with the production of enzyme, the first and most important step is we have to select which enzyme we need to produce, because depending on the enzymes which we want to generate, we will have to select our microbes. It is not that all microbes can produce all types of enzymes, no a certain group of microorganisms are successful in producing certain types of enzymes. So, the first and foremost thing is we need to fix up two important factors. One, which enzyme I need to produce, accordingly I will have to decide what microorganism I shall take. Isolated enzymes were first used in detergents in 1914, although their protein nature was not proven till 1926. In fact, the first large scale microbial production started in the year 1960, where most of the enzymes are nowadays produced commercially by two methods. One is the submerged culture, another one is the surface solid state fermentation process. Now, fermentation basically are of two kinds. Let, let me explain to you first of all. One is submerged fermentation, where we are taking a large fermenter tank with a certain number of accessories. Accessories basically we mean a presence of a rotor or a the thing one which rotates. There should be a presence of baffles, so that whenever there is a whirling motion, the entire solid content do not get settled on the wall of the fermenter. If the process is an aerobic one, we need to add a sparger, where from where the oxygen needs to be bubbled throughout the media. Now, that depends on whether the process is aerobic or the process is anaerobic. 
we need to have a motor on the top which will be continuously driving this shaft. The purpose overall purpose is we need to keep the entire thing in a state of motion. The volume is automatically very large that is what we are calling as in a brief nutshell what submerged fermentation means. Submerged it means it is immersed in a entire media. There is another process which we call a surface fermentation where we are taking a shallow tray where we are putting the media and then on the surface we are allowing the organism to grow and then they produce the microbes. So, the major industrial enzymes that are produced are generally recognized as safe. The status microbes are largely biological. Now, these are the various steps which we will be studying today. Selection of suitable enzymes, then there will be a selection of a suitable production strain. Then we will be studying about the production methodology, whether we are going for adopting of surface or a submerged fermentation process. After the product has been produced, then methods to increase the production, sometimes you know the yield becomes so less that is not commercially viable. So, for that situation what we need to do is we need to have certain mechanism, certain process which we need to certain modification which we need to do, so that the yield of the product increases, moment yield increases that becomes commercially lucrative for us. And then there will be a downstream processing by virtue of which we will be in a position to isolate the enzyme purify that enzyme and ultimately develop it into a suitable stable product. Now, these are the steps which are to be followed for each and every enzymes for each and every product which are obtained with the help of microorganisms. So, first is selection of suitable enzyme. The criteria used in the selection of an industrial enzyme include specificity reaction rate, pH, temperature optima, stability, effect of inhibitor and the affinity towards the substrate. These factors are to be considered. Enzymes used in industrial application must usually be tolerant against various heavy metals and there is no need for addition of any cofactors. Next, we are going on for the next step that is step number 2, selection of a suitable strain. Let us see how we do. Now, whenever we are selecting a strain, there are certain points which you need to keep in your mind. The microorganisms are preferred, question is why. First of all, the reasons are they have a very good fast rate of growth. Two, the ease of the culture, you can make it multiply very easily. Three, cheap in nature, easily available. These are the some of the factors which has helped us to focus on microbes to be used as the production strain. Extracellular enzyme producers are preferred to intracellular products producers because the recovery and purification process are much more simpler. Now, enzymes are basically of two kinds one intracellular, the other one is extracellular. Let me explain what they are. Intracellular means the enzymes <coughs> after it is being produced they are retained by the microbial cell, microbial cell retained within their cell wall. On the other hand, extracellular enzymes means after they are produced, the enzymes are liberated by the microorganisms inside the media. So, in intracellular one, they are retained within the microbial cell wall, whereas in case of extracellular one, they are liberated outside in the media. So, my dear students, whenever you are asked to purify, the first question which you need to know is, 
whether the enzyme is intracellular or it is extracellular. If it is intracellular, so automatically whenever you are trying to go for downstream processing, you need to take the microbes. That is after filtration, you have to take the residue. You need to take the microbes, you need to process the microbes rather. How? With the help of certain physical agents, with the help of certain chemical agents. Physical agents and chemical agents are used to break the cell wall and extract the enzymes out. On the other hand, if it is an extracellular process, that is if the enzymes are produced by the microorganism and they are liberated in the media, you are just in a position to take out the media. After filtration, you take the filtrate and you then simply go for further purification and recovery. So, it has been seen that if the product is an extracellular enzyme nature, it is always advisable and always preferable because the recovery and purification process is very easy. On the other hand, if it is an intracellular one, the problem arises to break the cell wall. It may so happen that in certain cases, the substantial amount of the enzyme gets lost. The microbes which are there, you cannot reuse it again because you have already broken the cell wall. Due to these certain factors, we always prefer to have enzymes which are extracellular in nature. The organism should be able to produce a large amount of desired enzyme within a reasonable time frame. It should be in a position to produce a large number of desirable in amount within a very short period of time. And in most of the case what we do is genetically modified microorganisms are used because they possess a great range of enzyme with varying properties. What are the varying properties? With improved activities, specificity, safe to handle and reduced content of various unwanted foreign proteins. So, genetically engineered microbial cell, they are most commonly utilized for increased productivity. Now, we are going on for step number 3. Step number 3 suggest production of the methodologies that is selection of the fermentation method which you will take. Whether you will go for a submerged one or you will go for a surfaced one that is or a solid state one. Let us see. Once the organism has been selected, the next step is you have to develop the production process. Submerged fermentation has been extensively used for industrial production of enzyme nowadays. Why? Because the volume of the media is large, so automatically you can easily imagine that the amount of enzyme which you will be get at the end of the day that will be large. On the other hand, but solid state fermentation it has been seen that they are gaining rapid uh, uh, interest worldwide for production of various primary as well as secondary metabolite. Now, the major task what you have to do is you have to optimize the fermentation process. Optimization of fermentation process is of very important parameter which you have to study at this particular junction or in this particular step. What are they? First is choice of media composition. What should be the amount of carbon material present? What should be the proportion of nitrogenous material, isotonic agent? Sometimes you know the process goes on for days together and whenever it goes on for days together, if there is a supply of oxygen through the sparger within the fermentation tank as I have told you, there is a possibility that foams are produced. 
that is foams are produced. Remember that these foams are nothing but surface active agent. These foams are nothing but surface active agent. Now, these foams what happens is they reduce the surface tension ultimately break the cell wall. That is these foams are harmful to the process of production. So, what we do is we have to give certain agents which we are calling as anti foaming agent. Anti foaming agent has to be deliberately added just to reduce the foam formation. So, we need to select what are the ingredients which we need to add, what are their proportion and we need to understand why they are added. Next we have to go for cultivation type, next we have to go for the process conditions irrespective of the type of bio process considerable effort and times are need to be spent to accomplish this task. Now, here as I am telling you time and again optimization of media composition, this is a maximum important factor which you need to decide. What should be the composition of the media on which the microbes will grow and produce the enzyme. Next is solid state fermentation, let us discuss how it basically works. Now, this submerged fermentation basically see you are preparing a media then you are applying a process of sterilization of the media and then you are putting it inside this is this is the fermentation tank. Now, here it is a motor, this is the motor and it rotates the agitator or a shaft. The purpose is the entire state should be in a motion this yellow color particle should be the nothing but the media this is the inoculum or the microorganism, this is the inoculum or the microorganism. Now, this has to be added. So, you need to add both the media sterile and the inoculum mix it nicely and now there are some bio process control parameters which needs to be checked. there are certain bio process control parameters which need to be checked. The large volume industrial enzymes are produced in 50 to 500 meter cube fermenters. The medium of submerged fermentation is liquid which remains in contact with the microorganisms or the inoculum. A supply of oxygen is essential for submerged fermentation because this oxygen not only you know supply oxygen, but also creates a sort of a turbulence within the fermentation media. There are four main ways of growing the microbes in submerged fermentation. One is batch culture, second one is fed batch culture, perfusion batch culture and continuous culture. In perfusion batch culture the addition of culture and withdrawal of equal volume of used cell minus the free medium is to be performed. In solid state fermentation the high cost of the enzyme production by submerged process fermentation makes it uneconomical to use in many enzymes. See in submerged process we are using a very large volume of medium. So, automatically the cost of the process is very high. So, if we want to reduce the cost if we want to lower the scale of operation automatically we have to go for solid state fermentation. The high cost of enzyme production by submerged fermentation makes it uneconomical to use many enzymes in several industrial process. Therefore, to reduce the cost of production solid state fermentation is a very attractive option, very important process, very important alternative available to you. 
Now, solid state fermentation possess several biotechnological advantages. What are they? High fermentation productivity, higher end concentration of the products, lower product stability, lower catabolic repression, cultivation of microorganisms specialized for water insoluble substrate or mixed cultivation of various fungi and lower demand of sterility due to the lower water content. When the water content is more, the possibility of unwanted microbes growing is more. Therefore, as because the water level or the water qu quantity is less, so it requires lesser demand for sterility. This is basically how it looks like. We have to select the microbes. There are the media contents of the substrate, enzyme, sugar, this we have to add and then ultimately it grows to produce a general generic fermentation uh, feedstock and then we have to use. Now, solid state fermentation is defined as a fermentation involving solid in absence of free water, but does not this, this term is important free water. Although the substrate must possess moisture to support the growth and my metabolism. The free water may be 0, but minimum moisture is necessary otherwise the organism will not grow, organism will not metabolize, you will not get the metabolic product. So, minimum water content should be there. The required water content in SSF is adsorbed by the substrate in a solid matrix and offer more advantages for the growth of microorganisms for the transfer of oxygen. Next methods for enhancing the production, once fermentation process is over, the fermenter liquid is subjected to rapid cooling to 5 degrees Celsius in order to reduce the process of deterioration. Separation of microorganism is accomplished either by the process of filtration or by the process of centrifugation of the refrigerated broth, but here you need to adjust the pH suitably, otherwise the enzyme activity may be lost. To obtain a higher purity of enzyme, it is precipitated with acetone, alcohols or inorganic salts. In large scale operations, salts are preferred to solvent because of the hazards for explosion. Scale up purification of end products and biomass estimation are some of the major challenges that have led to the researcher to search for newer solutions. Scale up in solid state fermentation has been a limiting factor. But recently, with the advancement of biochemical engineering, a number of bioreactors had been developed which has overcome this particular challenge. Next, we are going to the process of downstream processing. In downstream processing, it again depends on whether the enzymes are basically intracellular or they are extracellular. If it is extracellular, then separation of the cells, uh, sorry, if it is intracellular, separation of cells from the media is required either by the process of centrifugation or by microfiltration. Now, see, extracellular means the media, in the media itself, the enzymes are there. So, medium we have to take concentrate the enzyme solutions by nanofiltration, and that will be followed by the process of uh, chromatography. Uh, if it is the cells are incorporated entrapped within the bacterial cell, then we have to take the cells as such, the cells will be taken, here the media will be taken, the cells, then we have to treat the cells either by the help of certain enzymes, uh, or either by the help of certain chemical chemicals or we can take the help of various physical process to break the cell wall and ultimately purify it by the process of uh, centrifugation and uh, then followed by nano filtration and purification by somatography and finally, production of, of a stable product 10 percent of the enzyme could be lost during the each purification step which may lead to lower enzyme recovery. To reduce the cost of the enzyme increase in enzyme recovery and thereby reduction in the number of purification steps are very important. Chromatography has played a very important role to uh, increase the productivity of the enzyme. Amylase is one of such enzymes which are used nowadays, uh, commonly used for production of sweeteners for food industries. This is a chart which shows 
the production of amylase with the help of a microbial strain either by submerged process or by the uh, solid state fermentation process. Bacillus lichenophermis is the organism which is commonly used. Next we are going for production of amylase, these are the optimum media composition. These are the optimum media composition which is used. The organism used is bacillus for the production of amylase. This is the process which we followed for the extraction of amylase from the fermentation media. The effect of pH, effect of temperatures are noted down here. This is the industrial production of lipase, an overall picture of how uh, this is the fungal lipase production. This is the process by which we are producing lipase in a pharmaceutical industry. Next, we are coming to protease, another very important application for the enzyme biotechnology. This is the in uh, industrial production of protease, the step number one isolation of the proteolytic microbes followed by step number 2 formulation of media that is followed by the step number 3 fermentation and finally, we are going for purification of the enzymes with this we are coming to the end of our class today. Thank you very much for your hearing.